Hey everyone, we're at the AMD booth now at CES 2019. AMD has had some of the biggest announcements of the show thus far, including the card behind me, Vega 7. And this is a 7 nanometer Vega product that we, we have a bit of details on, a bit more depth than what was seen in the keynote by AMD's Lisa Su. So we're going to be going through that today. Ryzen 3000 series, we don't have any product details, but we have some top level stuff that we can go through as well for AMD's showcase at CES 2019. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORUS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The AORUS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. So starting with the card behind me with Vega, uh, first of all, get you the, the release date and the pricing looking like February and $700 for that one. Performance, it's supposed to compete roughly with the 2080. Of course, trust but verify, we'll test it when we get it. Uh, but generally it's looking like that should be about where it falls. And if you look at our benchmark numbers for the recent 2060, you'll see that the uh, 64 card, Vega 64, falls around the 2070 performance, 2060, 2070, somewhere in there. So 2080 seems reasonable as a target for Vega 7. For the spec, 60 CUs, you can compute pretty much everything else from the CU count, so you can get uh, core count and ROPS, I think it's 128 ROPS. We'll try and put a table up on the screen for you if you want the hard specs and data for what the card will have internally. GCN's not getting any, it's not GCN 6 or anything, it's still same GCN, it's getting some retooling and tuning though. And some of that tuning, this is new information for you, will be how boost functions. Uh, we don't have specifics on it. I asked a few times, and uh, all, all I can tell you is that Boost will be retooled. So we'll see what that means later. As far as the clocks, 1450 MHz is the target base clock. Boost is TBD. Peak clock is different from Boost, so that's like a, a burst, like a temporary spike. It can peak to one point or uh, to 1800 megahertz and be converted to gigahertz for some reason. So 1800 megahertz versus 1450 base uh, Boost TBD. It'll be lower than peak and uh, I asked about uh, overclocking, VBIOS locks, all that stuff. As far as we are aware today, from the AMD representatives we spoke to today, it is our understanding that VBIOS and overclocking capabilities should pretty much mirror Vega 5664. That's not counting things like voltage. I don't have voltage numbers for you. Theoretically, uh, one would guess it might be a lower operating voltage at a given clock because moving to 7 nanometer, new process, but we don't have a hard number for you. VBIOS will, as I know today, not be locked though. This card, speaking of VBIOS, does not have a switch on it. I think there might be a VBIOS switch on the final reference card, we'll see, uh, but there's not one here today. TDP, they're looking at probably 300 watts, not final. Uh, it does have two 8-pin connectors. AMD has some room to go up or down depending on how they feel competitively. They could raise that a bit if they feel like uh, it makes more sense to get some, some more frequency as opposed to lower power consumption. So TDB is not finalized, but probably around 300 watts, and that'll power the uh, base and boost. I asked about the, uh, the, reg the voltage regulator module. We don't have details yet on the reference designs, VRM, MOSFET, controller, anything like that. The cooler we have information on, because it's in front of me and I can look at it, and the cooler, the backplate looks like exactly the same as the previous Vega backplates. The assembly is, uh, has a distinct lack of screws, if you look at the previous NVIDIA coverage we had, and probably a lack of glue, so that's a good thing. But um, triple fan axial cooler, which is interesting. It is a normal two-slot, and I think, yes, two-slot. Uh, it's a bit taller, though, for the PCB than the, than the actual expansion slot, so um, we'll see where that goes with the custom PCBs later. Memory, 16 gigabytes HBM2. HBM2 is very expensive. When we talked about uh, Vega previously, we saw somewhere around $150 at the time of talking about it. That price has fluctuated. It's about 150 bucks to make a Vega 56 or 64 card with the HBM2 that it had on it at the time. Uh, so that contributes to the $700 price point of the Vega 7 card that we're looking at here today. So that gives you the basics. Um, I, there are some targeted architecture changes. I asked for specific, specifics. We did not get any yet. So targeted arc changes, the memory controller doubles in size. But I, other than that, power management, things like that may change. We'll find out closer to launch, I suppose. For other stuff, anti-aliasing should be really interesting for testing. So 
uh, the charts that were shown were often, we were told they were max settings. For the internal testing that AMD did, all we heard was max settings. What it really meant was maximum preset. So for Rainbow Six Siege, uh, we don't know, I, someone can validate for me in the comments, but maximum preset anti-aliasing, I'm not sure what that's set to. But in theory, Vegas 7 should be good with anti-aliasing because heavily memory bandwidth intensive. So uh, that is a, a good targeted test that we'll be looking at when we get the card in our hands. If you're into anti-aliasing at high numbers, this might be an interesting one to look at. And uh, other than that, HBM is running at 2 gigabits per second. You can calculate the rest of the, the numbers from there. We'll have a table for you. Voltage TD, uh, T, to be determined, as I said. And then uh, that covers the AMD video card. On the CPU side, so everything that was discussed at the next Horizon event is still valid. There's no new information architecturally on Ryzen 3000 series. I have some information on how the uh, PCIe and motherboard situation is going to work, and this is not official from AMD, a lot of this. Uh, so in speaking with some of our sources here at the show who work at the hardware companies, uh, the manufacturers, we've learned that X570 is the biggest point of holdup. So is AMD going to launch 3000 series with X570, or are they going to uh, launch earlier and just you have X470 to work with. So that's the biggest point of consideration for AMD right now for the Ryzen 3000 series launch. AMD is saying mid, uh, mid year for launch. We've heard around June from the, uh, the partners, but that could change as the specs get finalized. X570 though, uh, as I said, biggest point of holdup. And then PCIe uh, Gen 4 is the next biggest thing to talk about for 3000 series. So PCIe Gen 4 will be on the new Ryzen 3000 series processors. Now, technically speaking, you're not really going to be exceeding bandwidth of Gen 3 presently with even a Titan RTX, but there is an argument for future use cases, and there's an argument for threader per epic use cases where you're using uh, a lot more GPUs, and if they're not bridged, then that could be potentially useful. So Gen 4, from a bandwidth standpoint, not the most important, but it is important to start doing it sooner rather than later. So uh, X570 will have Gen 4. It'll be going through the CPU. The chipset, <clears throat> as we understand it, will be Gen 3 and Gen 2 for general purpose. Gen 4 will not be on the chipset, but also not important for the chipset. And uh, also, PCI SIG will likely be adopting AMD as the reference platform for PCIe 4, which is an important move for AMD. And then the, the biggest challenge here with existing X470 boards is going to be anything muxing or dealing with uh, like a PEX or PLX chip, for example, because with PEX and PLX or muxers for PCIe lanes, you're dealing with splitting the lanes and sort of faking an X16 or X8 setup for the PCIe lanes. So in those instances, the muxers and the PEX chips would have to be updated for the X5, X470 boards if motherboard vendors want to go backwards and do that uh, to support PCIe Gen 4. So if you're dealing with anything that does PEX muxing of PCIe lanes, uh, you could run into issues with PCIe Gen 4 coming out of the CPU, going into one of those, and then uh, not being up to spec. So other than that, X470 will work with 3000 series. It'll have to be flashed. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's uh, for PCIe, if you're using a Gen 3 card, which is all of them, then you just drop it into the X470 board. The CPU will downstep to Gen 3. So it's not like there's any compatibility concern there, which is good. The biggest concern is just going to be the endpoints on the PCIe uh, electrically. So physically, nothing should really change on the motherboards for the most part. Um, but that'll all be validated as they launch. So I think that, uh, that should get you some new information on the boards that you might not have had previously. It's just a question of does X570 come out with 3000 series? And I, I would hope the answer is yes, because it's better for the market if they do that. So, oh, and also X470 could theoretically be updated for Gen 4 support. It's just a matter of if the board vendors do it, and they might have some validation concerns. So that covers it. That's the AMD presence at CES 2019. Thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more coverage of the show. And you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly, or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. I'll see you all next time.